Today we're going to talk about section 5.3, which is very similar to section 5.2. We're just going in the opposite direction. Uh, we're still going to talk about angles that are associated with parallel lines. Uh, today we're going to use the parallel lines to talk about our corresponding angles, alternate alternate exterior angles, what relationship we can make with those two, and then what we can make the relationship with the interior and exterior angles on the same side. We're also going to use our parallel line to solve algebraic problems. Yesterday, uh, we talked about each pairs of angles. If they are congruent or supplementary, then they form pair, or they are a by parallel line. But this time, we're talking about if parallel lines, then each pair of alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and corresponding angles are congruent. The other relationship we made was if we have parallel lines, um, each pair of interior and exterior angles that are on the same side of the transversal, then those angles are supplementary. A couple other definitions that are going to be important for us is uh, if we have a in a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, so if we had two lines that are parallel, a line that was perpendicular to one, then it would have to be perpendicular to the other one. The other one that will be extremely important in this one we'll use uh, for our algebraic problems is if we have two lines that are parallel to a third line. So if the first two lines are parallel to the third line, then they also must be parallel to each other, making all three lines parallel. And that's where this parallel postulate comes in, where if we have a <coughs> point in between two lines, we could draw in a third line through that point. We can draw in that line such that it is parallel to the first one, and because the first and the third are parallel, we could also say that it is parallel to the third, making all three lines parallel. And if we look at the problem right below, that's where this comes into play, so we can solve what's called a crook problem. We want to find the, ang the measure of angle x, but we need to add in a third line that is parallel to the first two, now we can incorporate our parallel lines properties. Because angle 130 and this top part of x are on the same side of the transversal, so they are same side interior angles, that means that they are supplementary. And because the measure of angle 40 right here and the bottom part of x between these two parallel lines are alternate interior, that means they are congruent. Therefore, I can say that the measure of angle x is 90 degrees. Go ahead and do another problem. Again, with this script problem, we need to draw in a parallel line. That does not mean that it bisects. Now, in this particular problem, it will only because we have same side interior angles of 150 and the top part of 60, which makes this 30. And because the entire angle is 60, then we have 30 left down here. It only happens to be true here because that angle is 150 degrees. Now between these two parallel lines, we can see that 30 and x are alternate, I'm sorry, same side interior, therefore x is 150 degrees. In this problem, we have to draw in a fourth parallel line. So why don't you go ahead and take a minute and solve this problem. Okay, when looking at this problem, we have first this top line and the blue line. We have alternate interior making this 50, leaving us with 40 down below. And then when we add in the green line, 
We have alternate interior giving us 40 degrees. And then we look at the bottom part here with alternate interior giving us 25, giving us a total angle of X of 65 degrees. Now how do we use these within proofs? Well first off in our first part here we can bring in the fact that we have congruent segments. Now we want to end up getting that angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent. This is our goal. We have to somehow come up with a way to connect angles 1 and 3. If we look in our given the fact that we have these two lines are parallel, we have different pairs of corresponding angles with one transversal and with another transversal we have other corresponding angles. So we can bring in different parts of those angles by connecting one and two and three and four separately. But we still have to figure out a way to connect each side and that's where that first given comes into play. Because uh, angles 2 and 3 are opposite of the sides in the big, big triangle. We can say that if two sides are congruent, then its opposite angles are congruent. We can then bring in the parallel lines. And then as I mentioned before, we can say that angles 1 and 2 are congruent because if lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. And now we have our connection, the link between angle 2. So we can say that angles 1 and 3 are congruent by the transitive property. In this particular problem, it, uh, we're going to combine sections 5, 2, and 5, 3 because we're going to use parallel lines in the very beginning and then we're going to prove parallel lines in the end. And we have to be very careful when we're looking at a problem like this on which angles we're talking about depending on the lines and then the transversal. So if we start with our first two lines here. And are being our transversal, we need to look for angles that are between the transversal and the parallel lines. And I see that we can talk about angles 1 and 4, given those two lines. We're also given these two sides congruent. And with one side in between, we could prove triangles are congruent. So, we start with the sides. And then we bring in our parallel lines. And remember to be careful so in our diagram it shows that angles 1 and 4 are congruent. As if parallel lines, then alternate interior angles are congruent. And then with our reflexive step, We now have enough information with side, angle, side to prove that the triangles are congruent. Be very careful that you label them in the proper order. And as I say that, I did not name them in the proper order. Now, after we get the triangles congruent, we can use corresponding angles, and we want to eventually prove that we have different parallel lines. So we want to get these two lines are parallel, and if we look at the same transversal, we have two angles here that are also alternated interior. So if we can say that they are congruent first by CPCPC, we now go in the exact opposite direction that we did from 2 and 3 and say the lines are parallel because 
we are now starting with alternate interior angles congruent and proving parallel lines. Why don't you go ahead and finish this proof for tomorrow, and this concludes section 5.3.